congratulations on this uh the gates of slumber self uh titled album is beautiful it's incredible um thank you what was it about uh this album that that stood out to you uh well i think generally the album is kind of a rebirth of the band um they stopped in 2013 and uh, it didn't look like there was going to be a gates of slumber for a long time and chuck and carl kind of got their friendship back on track and there was an opportunity to go to play a festival in Hamburg and things just kind of built from there. So they asked me to play bass and I said, of course. And so it's really kind of a, a new version of, of the gates of slumber. And mm -hmm. for that, it's kind of a celebration of, you know, what they've accomplished over the years. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you feel coming in uh, and taking over the base uh, position when, uh, you know, uh, sadly, uh, the prior bassist is no longer with us? Well, I was always a big fan of Jason's and, you know, he wrote a lot of the material um, back in the day. He was mm -hmm. kind of a writing machine and I know I'll never be able to really fill his shoes, but try to f have the same spirit of, creativity and, and try to bring you know whatever i can to the songs mm -hmm. um so i know that you know he's always kind of there with us when we're in the spirit of creativity as well and we're currently working on three songs for a split ep and one of those songs is one of the last songs that he wrote um that he had sent to chuck and so we're kind of doing that in a, in a tribute to him. So that's going to be pretty awesome. That sounds great. Um, the opening track for this, uh, Embrace embrace the Lie. Yes. yes. Embrace the Lie is encompasses this album. I, I think it's a perfect song to start off with. Um, how was this, uh, this song written? And, you know, why did you guys decide to put this at the fr forefront of the album? Well, I believe that Chuck had some of the riffs and it was right before that I, I'd actually joined. They had kind of bashed out the arrangement a little bit. And at the time they had called it The Keep, which was a nod to their original formative version of the band. Mm -hmm. um, and then at some point in time, it it morphed and became, you know, what it is today. And I think because it was one of the first songs that they had collaborated on once they had gotten back together that, and it was, you know, strong enough that we wanted to have it start off the album. But um, I mean, I, I, it's kind of a, a dark nod to, you know, world events and mm -hmm. you know the political distress that everything's been happening in the last few years so it, it just fit mm -hmm. and following this track we have uh we are perdition i, I think that's my favorite uh s a song from the album it is so clean it is so powerful uh, it, it impacted me for uh even though all the songs are great, this one just uh, for some reason stood out to me in my in my head. Uh, what was it like creating that track? Well, that particular song is the one that I kind of came up with. Um, I remember I came home from rehearsal with my other band, and this the riff was in my head. So by the time I got out of the car and and grabbed the bass and hit record on my phone, I had half of the arrangement finished. It was really bizarre. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just, it was just 
I, I didn't want to lose it, so I had to hurry up and, and get it recorded. And I still have the recordings somewhere, and I tried to come up with as much of it as I could. And when I brought it to the guys, we we did some tweaking and and added some improvisation and came up with the other riffs. Um, but I'm just glad to that it found a home and it, it worked its way out of my skull because it was it was pretty omnipresent. That's awesome. Uh, you know, uh, for a lot of metal artists, uh, you know, going from band to band, it's, it's a very natural thing. Uh, you find different people to collaborate with. What is it about this band that, you know, just attracted such uh, high quality musicians that were able to work together so well? Well, um, Chuck played on the first few releases uh, of The Gates of Slumber back in early 2000s. And then he left the band and they went through a lot of different iterations and uh, of the band and the, their style changed a little bit here and there. Um, but I've always known the guys and um, I recorded their first demo, I think, well, maybe the second demo in 2002, the Sabbath Witch demo was a different lineup. So being in this music community community in Indianapolis is not really huge. So if you play, you know, heavy metal or, you know, doom metal or, or whatever, there's a small circle of friends and I'm just fortunate enough to, to have, you know, lucked into playing with Chuck and Apostle Solitude. And when they decided to get the band back together, they asked if I'd like to play bass. And I said, of course. So, um, I, they're they're seasoned musicians. They've been playing, you know, their whole lives. Chuck plays the drums and guitar, uh, and he plays guitar and apostle and sings and plays drums with the gate. So he can pretty much do anything. So, and then Carl's been playing for you know I don't know how many years, but he's got his own style, and you know it, we just have a good symbiosis and can merge the ideas together well I, I believe um and i'm i'm just a fan of the guys and the music and the band and i'm just glad, happy to be here you know uh reading uh, about this album uh half of the tracks were written before covid half of them during covid uh i think that this has happened to a lot of bands you know what, what was it about covid that just allowed musicians to sit down and refined uh ideas that they had in order to create such amazing things once we got out out of co uh, you know the whole COVID situation well COVID was really difficult for a lot of people myself included I, I lost both my parents during that time and um we had we had gotten together in 2019 f for the f tour uh in 2020 and we were in uh, Finland when they said, well, we were actually in Stockholm and they said, no one can fly home to America. You're just going to be stuck there. And we were like, Oh no, like ran to the airport and at, you know, three in the morning and waited in line for them to open. And they said they, they couldn't help us. <laughs> and so it turns out we could still fly home. It was just like a panic. And, and so we played the last show in Helsinki and and then flew home and even then everyone was panicking in the in the airports like everyone you know it's very crowded and the plane was full and when we landed in Chicago there were like 3,000 people all in lines together and the CDC was there taking everyone's temperature it was just the craziest thing and as soon as we got home everything shut down mm -hmm. so I don't think we even got together for a while but you know being as it was there wasn't a whole lot to do and focus on so i think when we did get back together it, we were really ready to 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 make some progress on the songs that we had and the other songs that were kind of waiting in, in the wings so uh, i wouldn't ever want to go through it again or wish it on anybody mm -hmm. but but in some ways it you know, it fed the the tonality 
of the songs. You know, there's kind of a menace to everything on the album, the darkness, and maybe that had a little bit to do with it. But then again, it would it's the gates of slumber, so it's got to be some somewhat dark. Definitely, and um, you know, how do you feel uh, about? possibly taking this album on tour and seeing how the crowd reacts to a live performance of these songs. I think that's definitely something we would be really interested in, in doing again. Uh, but unfortunately right now, Carl takes care of his 81 uh, year old father as a primary caretaker. So our ability to even practice is limited because he's got to kind of be there, you know, 24 mm -hmm. seven. Um, so we're not a hundred percent sure, you know, what's going to happen on that end. So we're, we're just gonna hope that, you know, someday we'll be able to get back out and, and, and do it. I know it's a tough situation for, for him to, to just have to do everything, but we know that that's family kind of comes first. So, you know, we're, we're we're lucky that we were able to get the album recorded and and find a good home for it uh there was a period of months where we didn't know if if anything was going to happen mm -hmm. so once it was recorded we were just sitting on it for a long time and just to finally get to this point is pretty miraculous so we'll take every every day as it comes and we'll be glad to to play live when we're ready and things have uh, worked themselves out. So we'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, congratulations on this album. It is a wonderful album. Great listen. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you.